Yo, what's good, Jets Nation? This is New York Jets Media, bringing you guys my analysis to the Cleveland Browns versus New York Jets game. That got wrapped up last night on Monday Night Football. The Cleveland Browns came out on top, 23-3. Going into this game, I wasn't too optimistic with the Jets' backup quarterback and Trevor Simeon. And I was right. Trevor did not look that good in the first half of the game until he got hurt. He actually had negative passing yards, which was mind-boggling to me. I've never seen a quarterback have negative passing yards in the first half of a football game, but that's what happened. The defense honestly played a lot better than I expected without C.J. Mosley and Quinn and Williams. Baker Mayfield did not look good. He had one flashy play, that 89-yard touchdown to Odell Beckham Jr., and that wasn't that too impressive. He just hit Odell, was wide open, and Odell just had a catch and run. Greg Williams had a very good system for Baker Mayfield. Baker did not look comfortable. The only thing about the defense that was a negative was we did not get to the quarterback enough. I'm pretty sure we only recorded like a couple sacks. And that's the biggest part of football. You have to win in the trenches. The Jets were losing in the offensive side of the ball in the trenches and the defensive side of the ball in the trenches. You're not going to win in this league if you cannot do that. If you cannot protect your own quarterback, and if you cannot get to the opposing quarterback, you are not going to win in this league ever, especially if you can't do either or. If you can at least protect the quarterback and not have a pass rush, okay, or vice versa. Jets have neither done, and it really is mind-boggling to me because we've invested so many first-round picks into this defensive line, and it's just not been stepping up. Jordan Jenkins, our only edge rusher that's decent, got injured in the first quarter with a calf injury. He was out for the whole game. Leonard Williams, huge, huge bust in my opinion. He is a complete disappointment. He absolutely looked awful. He literally, look, it looked like he did not even try. He was had only two tackles, zero QB hits, zero sacks. Another thing about the Jets defense, which was really strange to me, was they benched Tremaine Johnson. Tremaine Johnson was not in the field for the whole game, and Nate Harrelson is the one that uh, plugged in for him. And Nate played a very good game. I did not expect him to be that good. He came in there and played phenomenal coverage on Odell. That one catch that Odell had, that one-handed catch, that was an amazing grab. He Nate was on him, couldn't have played better defense. It was just a better offensive play. Um, another good player on defense who I really liked was Blake Cashman. He's filling in for the injured CJ Mosley and Avery Williamson. He, as a rookie for a fifth rounder, looks very, very promising. I really like the way he reads the defense. He's an extremely good ca uh, tackler and a zone coverage, and he's very fast as well. So I really like what I see from Blake Cashman. And the superstar of this game was obviously Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell is an absolutely stud. You can just tell he did everything in his power to lead this Jets offense, and it's really unfortunate that they cannot get in the end zone. They only recorded one field goal, and they only put up three points, as we can see by the score. Le'Veon Bell proved that he is a top five running back in this league still, even though he took off a year off. And another player that I'm looking out for who played pretty good, Sam Ficken. He only attempted one field goal and he nailed it. It was like a 46 yarder or something like that. And that's extremely good news for Jets fans because we've been having a kicker atrocity for this whole off season. And hopefully Sam Ficken can be our long-term answer. And then another huge positive which was pretty amazing, was Luke Folk coming in as a third stringer for the injured Trevor, and he came in and played very good for a QB3. He completed 20 of 25 passes, just under 200 yards, and had a 99 passer rating. I did not expect Luke Falk to be this good. He looked very comfortable, and he played very good in preseason, so I was excited to see what he can do in an actual live regular season game. A funny stat, or about Luke Folk. Well, it's not really a stat, but it's just something funny to think about. He was drafted in the sixth round with 199th pick. And for those of you guys that do not know, Tom Brady was selected in the same exact scenario. Sixth round, 199th pick. So maybe Luke Folk is the next Tom Brady. Who knows? Obviously kidding. It's just funny how they were both drafted at the same time. Another good positive, Dow Roberts. Uh, I mean, he didn't really play that great all game, but he had that one interception. He played phenomenal coverage on Odell, tipped the ball up and caught it for an interception. So you got to give credit where credit's due. And Jamal Adams, too. Jamal Adams, you can just tell he's doing everything in his power 
to lead this Jets defense. And without C.J. Mosley, it was really hard because he cannot do everything. It's just really unfortunate. At the end of the game, you just see Jamal go off sides, and he's doing everything he can to lead this guy, lead these guys by example. And he's so passionate about the game, and it really, hurt, really breaks my heart that Le'Veon Bell and Jamal Adams are just sitting there and looking at the Jets in their 0-2 because they are so passionate about this game of football. And another problem was Adam Gase. Adam Gase's play calling was stale again, in my opinion. Yes, he had Trevor to work with and Luke Falk to work with, not Sam Donald, but he didn't really have that creative offensive play call guru that I really expected from Adam Gase. It kind of reminds me of Jeremy Bates last year, and Jeremy Bates was probably one of the worst offensive coordinators I've ever witnessed. Too many screen passes, too many conservative passes, and I mean, I don't expect him to unleash Luke Folk and make him throw the ball and be aggressive because he's the third stringer and he just got called up from the practice squad, but still, you got to get more aggressive on offense, especially when we're down to such big points. Our defense was on the field the whole game, and we really played a lot better than I expected as this Jets team is banged up, a lot of injuries. And in my opinion, if Sam Donald did not have mono and Sam Donald was completely healthy and played this game, I think the Jets could have won this game. I'm not saying it's guaranteed they won the game if Sam Donald was playing. All I'm saying is the defense played very good enough to be able to keep the offense in the game and if Sam Darnold was playing he easily would have had at least a touchdown or two because the Cleveland Browns defense is not that good and I still have confidence in Sam Darnold that he is has a lot of potential for a quarterback and he's only going to get better yes Sam has mono we're not going to see him for week three and then we're hopeful for week five after the bye week but who knows could be week six and you never know when Sam gets healthy you, he's not going to be the same person physically right away he's He's at home sick, not eating because he has mono, he's losing weight. Hopefully, good news comes out that he's gaining weight and he feels good and his mind's in the right spot because if you're a quarterback in this league, you need to have your mind right. And for Sam Darnold to be sitting at his house watching the Jets just blow it on Monday Night Football without him there that he can't do anything about, it probably crushes him. And I feel so bad for Sam. This is just a really unfortunate stretch for us Jets fans and I want to bring you guys this video of my breakdown of the game and like I keep saying we got to start being optimistic it's really hard in this dark stages because we were so hopeful all season and I was so hopeful I really expected big things from the season and everything's just going down and it's nothing we can control I can't do anything about it you can't do anything about it we all can't do anything about it all only thing we can do is keep our heads high and just hope for the best. Maybe we can pull a trade for Jalen Ramsey. He requested a trade. Who knows? Let's hope the Jets can pull this off on um, against the Patriots and at least be competitive. It's obviously going to be a loss on some, next Sunday. But let's hope for a competitive game. <laughs> that's all That's all for this video. Drop a comment down below what you guys think the Jets should do for the QB situation. Now they only have Luke Folk starting. What they should do schematically, the offensive line. Should they trade people? Should they cut people let me know what you guys think that joe douglas should start doing because this team is not looking like it's going anywhere at the moment with that being said let's go jets i'll catch you guys in my next video peace